So again, that was part of you know trying to learn at the beginning, you know, where those where those uh, safe places were for operating the spillway, flow wise. So Matt, can you tell us, take us back to um, February seventh, the day this thing failed? You had a guy out there doing what? Testing the sirens or doing some work on the siren? Yeah. So we had one of our electricians working on the siren, and um, he he was actually right next to the chute near where the failure actually happened later later on. Um, but he could see that water was having irregular flow, and he was seeing some uh, some splashing that wasn't over the over the wall, but he could just see it in the chute making a, making a mess. And so he called into our area control center and immediately. Uh, notified them. Um, our field division chief was then notified and, and he came out and verified it himself and asked to have the spillway, sh spillway shut down as soon as possible. And so uh, that all happened in just, you know, a matter of you know, 30 minutes or so. And, and by the time we got the uh, the water shut down, we had already seen that huge hole that everyone has, you know, so famously pictured since then. And then there's a, a, somebody shot a videotape on the other side that must have been there at about the same time. Right from the public, um, yeah, yeah we, we've seen the, the videos online, but yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who that was. Or so, how they had access. so they shut the, um, you shut the thing down. You have some folks come out and take a look at the hole, <laughs> and they said, uh, what they tell you, give you a time estimate to fill that hole. Yeah, so we, we we reached out to some construction folks in the industry and asked how fast can you fix that hole, and uh, they estimated maybe two to three weeks. And, oh, and uh, the storm that was coming in on us was was going to fill up the lake within two to three days so yeah at that time we had to make the decision we, we were going to have to use that spillway broken so. had no choice but to use the broken spillway yeah. uh -huh. It's Thursday, the 24th of August, and time for a very special Oroville update with unprecedented access to the Oroville construction site inside the spillway today. My name's Juan Brown, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. So being down here on the construction site today really helped cleared up a lot of things that I was guessing about and a lot of the confusing issues. So future updates should have a lot more accurate information. One of the milestones we want to look for in the next two weeks is that gray RCC in the lower spillway continue to rise and simultaneously the RCC in the upper plunge pool begin to rise such that those two aggregates come together at the same time in two weeks. So they should be able to rise out of the plunge pool high enough in two weeks to meet the slope of the spillway coming up from the lower plunge pool in just two weeks time. And from there they can continue as one single RCC roller operation on up the spillway. But before we dive deep down into the construction there at Oroville and potentially get lost in its enormous complexity and logistical detail I think it's just, I think it's a good opportunity to <laughs> go flying in the mighty Luscombe and get a broad overview again of the entire Oroville spillway I'll get you some pictures of the whole spillway bust out my Crayolas and show you the different sections of the spillway that we're talking about which will go a long way to explain the logistics of this rebuild and the different construction techniques that are used in each section in order to meet the time constraints that allow for an operational spillway for this flood season and next flood season. Now I'm going to have some very special guests on this episode and I'm going to bust this episode up probably into two or three sections because there's just so much technical detail to cover. And these special guests have reached out to me uh, to 
tell you this story because this is the only place now, a media outlet, that you're going to find technical information on the rebuild of Oroville other than DWR itself. I think you'll be very impressed with the technical expertise of our special guests as these are some of the top players in the rebuild of the Oroville Spillway. Back over the Oroville Dam on the mighty Luscom on Friday the 25th of August, we'll take a still picture here and break this spillway up into sections. Starting at the upper portion of the spillway is the original slab which has been thoroughly inspected and is getting rock bolted in place and will be removed and replaced next season with all new structural concrete. Next is the short section that was affected by unauthorized blasting. Instead of leaving it for this year, they decided to pull it all out and replace it this year. More structural concrete. The next section has been completely removed and replaced with new structural concrete and they're beginning to pour the new structural training walls. At the end of this section is a structural concrete cutoff wall which will begin a two foot step down to the RCC and an aeration feature. The middle section of spillway which covers the two big plunge pools are gonna be all roller compacted concrete which gives the design its limiting feature for next season of 100,000 CFS based on the height of the RCC training walls. This section will be resurfaced with structural concrete and structural concrete training walls next year bringing the spillway up to its final design capacity of 270,000 CFS, not to be confused with operational limits. Finally, in the lower section has been completely removed and is being replaced with new structural concrete on top of leveling concrete, bolted all the way down to bedrock. Okay, so we've seen this project a million times from the air. Let's get back on terra firmi and see this project for the first time on the ground. As most old pilots will tell you, the more firmi, the less terra. So let's go take a look at one of the single biggest monumental engineering projects going on in America right now today. What, what are we looking at? Uh, water elevation today, 760. Yesterday, yesterday it was 763. 763. Uh, so. Yeah, maybe 762. Looking at taking her down to 700, and then you're saying she's going to drift down a little bit lower from there until the rains come. Right. All right. What's going on in the big white canvas building right there? Over there on the side is a maintenance yard for Kiwit. They okay. do a lot of their uh, equipment maintenance. So anything from changing oils to changing right. tires to major retrofits if needed. And the wood poles represent the shoe fly connection for the temporary That's correct. power situation. All yeah. right. So these will remain in effect until uh, the main power realignment is completed here in another month and a half, two months. Which will be soon to get the secant power, the secant wall drilling going on, right? Yeah, it's so in the way. when we come around the corner, you'll see the secant power wall and um, part of the construction that they have plenty of work to do, but at some point they eventually will need to. They'll need to get the power lines out of the way because those, those drill rigs are tall enough they can hit the power. They hit the power lines, yeah. yeah. So this is the spillway bridge that we used to use to get over to the uh, spillway boat ramp. Um, oh, there she is. We're looking right down the stream there. Yeah. And here's the uh, gate structure. Well, this is neat. I've never been down in this part of, the, of this before. Look at that. There's the emergency spillway OG weir wall right there. <laughs> and a big old road getting across. Yeah. So all this temporary um, slurry that they placed in here during the emergency, next year will come out before they put the new RCC in. Yeah, so we want to make sure we have quality control on that material. During the emergency, we needed to get it in here as fast as we could. And so we had concrete and rock trucks placed in as fast as possible. So they just threw it in here. So that'll 
that'll get you the quality control that you need for this. And it'll be refilled with uh, roller compacted concrete, so. Right. That material at the bottom, it's going to be taken out this year? Next year. Next year. So you can't fall wild. So you can't fuck out the wall is right here next to this on the left. All right. The pro rigs that are performing that work right now. The wall is on the Yeah. And there's the back side of the spillway. Is there any talk of doing anything to improve in the uh, inlet to the spillway? Uh, it, no, it, not that I know of. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, performed pretty well over the years. Yeah. So they had to blast that out of really a tough, fresh rock. Yeah, and so, so they're uh, happy with that. Yeah, it's still pretty sustainable the way that it's looking right now. They've looked at it. So this is the... Um, the PCC plant here, the structural concrete plant? Right, and so that's a refrigerated system. So they, they keep those, those three silos that you see over there are actually covering the rock aggregates uh, from the sun. And so they want to keep everything cool so they can actually deliver concrete at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And the, um, they use they still use, in, uh, what are they using, liquid nitrogen and uh, They use that if they need ice? to, but they do have, um, they do generate ice and they actually have refrigeration systems for, for the uh, entire okay. belt structures and everything. So that system is pretty remarkable. Very complex. This is it. Is everybody's parking lot to get to work in too? I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So they all got to come across the uh, spillway to get here, or they got another access? Nope. Everybody's huh? coming in the same way. We can theoretically get in from Burma Road, which is a road that we improved. It used to be an old trail. Yeah. Uh, it actually was one of the original haul routes for construction of Warville Dam. Uh -huh. And so we uh, went and widened it and improved some some bridge areas. Uh -huh. We can get here from that side, but uh, it takes a little bit longer and all kinds of different offices up here, it looks like. Yeah, so these are DWR, has a series of construction offices, and then Kiewitz construction offices are actually behind this little road for All right. I'm just trying to find a parking spot, but as you can see, it's pretty busy. <laughs> Keep, so the, all this concrete, all this aggregate here is covered to keep it cool, keep it all you want to be able to deliver that at, at 55 degrees. There's that big flag. So we've driven over the dam in the top of the spillway up to the structural concrete plant located right here. Home to the biggest snow cone maker in the world. Time to go inside and meet the rest of our crew. Press access during the emergency was very limited. But today we got unprecedented access and time to get all our questions answered. There are three different locations that kind of capture the, the primary activities that are going on. I, I don't know that we're hopefully not super strict. I mean, if there's a good spot to see something that's going to be nice and safe for these guys to take their video, and if uh, they want to ask some questions, we can do that. I was hoping something definitely that would show pretty close. I, don't, I think this viewing platform is now kind of low to look at the RCC. Is there anything higher where you'd be able to see the RCC going in? There's a couple of different locations. Um, no, so. So are you wanting to see this location or this location? You know, I can get here and see down. There's also a good way to go. Yeah, the upper scour would be way cool to see. Yeah, I think that if we could somehow both. See, see this and then maybe even down here, because down here you can see all the lower shoot and the RCC at the same time, which I think kind of really captures both. And then maybe one at the top. I'm thinking three stops would be a good kind of yeah. a good thing. So if you want to, if you if you think that there's a good spot, I think originally we're talking. First, we reviewed the amazing engineering feat of the cleanup after the disaster. Kind of what was uh, thrown into the water from uh, the spill that they had to clear out of the river prior to really doing anything. And that's probably almost as impressive as all the demo and the construction that's going on, which is cleaning that pile yep. up. That dirt was approximately 30 feet above water level, and the water level is probably is probably about uh, 60, 70 feet deep. So there's about, I think we count that. A little over 100 feet, I think, in total. Of stuff in the, deep, to in the deepest locations. Yeah. So that's about a million and a half cubic yards of materials that we actually put out of the river. And this is what's being recycled back into the RCC today. Yeah. Yeah, as much as we can. You know, mm -hmm. we, they stockpile them in stockpile two and one, and then also <laughs> down at the uh, Cherokee Road stockpile. So they're sorting it now and they're using as much as they can in the RCC. There are some spoils, some, some 
what they yeah what they, they call can't use. you know more of the soils and the rock that's just not so the fines the fines yep. and stuff so they use that the giant debris field of course is what backed up the water in the thermalito diversion pool forcing the high up power plant to shut down and threaten to flood it now some folks were of the opinion of why re bother rebuilding the lower spillway at all why not just use the new formed canyon it's flowing clean in there well it's still just too much work to clean up the debris that would continue to erode out of the canyon Some of you were wondering about this grid pattern drawn in the spillway, and here's the explanation. An inspection pattern. Right out a month ago. So. so this shows the grid pattern, and this grid pattern is translated right onto the rocks below, right? That's what you see on the rocks below. And this was this product was created with your drone 3D mapping? Right, so really this is just a, probably a, uh, an aerial view. I don't even know if it was created with a drone, but this is just how the contractor tracks all of the individual areas of uh -huh. the, the, the construction. So you can actually see all of the individual panels will be constructed within exactly. these. And exactly. This allows them to actually track dental concrete, leveling concrete. We talk about all these different types of concrete. It kind of gives them you know, a little yeah, bit of a tracking right. tool yeah, right. to watch how things progress. And so um, this grid, though, is, is really critical for the construction folks to know where everything's happening. So. Is each of those grid lines about the size of one structural panel, approximately? No. No, it's, it's a different, a different scale. Different, okay. Yeah. Right. It's, um, I think they're something different. A little bit different size. Yeah. These they're are quite just a, they're a manageable size area that they can map out, mm -hmm. and identify areas, mm -hmm. and then once they get up to the leveling, uh, they're able to lay out the slabs a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they update these, and so th this is an older version, but th this is how they're starting to track some of these things, right, Tom? So. so how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Here they are, the plans. Now a word about cameras. The cameras that we see online are provided by the California S State Parks Department. Kiewit has their own set of cameras shown here in the office, and DWR has a different set of cameras, neither of which are hooked up to a live feed to the internet. However, Kiewit is now showing time-lapse footage from their cameras on YouTube on the California DWR channel. This is Kiewit camera number three from 23 to 26 August, right over the viewing platform that we walked on in the main plunge pool. So put on your hard hat and boots and we're going to start this tour with a look at the structural concrete plant and then go down and look at the secant cutoff wall before we get into the spillway proper. I've got well over an hour's worth of material to show you just on this one tour alone. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for your support. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so and hit that little bell so, the, so that you'll get notified of these updates as soon as I make them available. In one single tour, starting by Hit the gas truck. 